You're watching Tag TV. I'm your host in Candor Talk. Today, I'm joined with a very dynamic politician, community activist, social rights activist, and human rights activist, Mr. Sharif al Sibavi. Sharif, welcome in our Tag TV studio today. You are star candidate of, oh. of PC <laughs> party. Thank you Ontario. very much. Thank you very much. Dar. And uh, you are a candidate for Aaron Mills' yes, Mr. writing, Mr. Yes. Sada writing. Your political journey is amazing <laughs> because you always wanted to serve the community. Yes. You always wanted to be in connect with the people. You are a people person. Yes, exactly. So what are your anticipations? As all of us in Ontario feel that um, it's now very difficult to make ends meet. It's uh, the hydro prices, the uh, carbon tax, and, and it's adding uh, not only in the gas pricing, but in every, uh, every retail because there is a component of transportation. So when, when the gas goes up, transportation cost goes up, now everything goes up. So all the pricing basically gone up because of the new carbon tax. And uh, I mean, different parts of the legislative supported the carbon tax with different levels, I would say different levels of uh, agreement, agreeing, agreeing on, on, the, on the concept uh, but in general, the normal person in every house feel the feel the the burden of that. Uh, putting on the on on top of that, the budget and the uh, deficit we have in our budget, and we are we are now going to be almost in debt till two thousand twenty something. So our kids are going to be basically continuing being in debt day one. So this is all those reasons make me feel that people are not happy. I'm not happy, I'm just one as, a, as an example of many other people in, in Ontario who are not happy and they don't see that the directions the government going on is gonna even help it to solve it or even freeze it. It's gonna go get worse and worse and worse. So I think it's sooner then later, we should have to do something about that. Uh, well, if the government, current government is trying to come up with some ideas to try to fix what they originally screwed up, um, but it, for me, it doesn't look like it's working. They are not coming up with any, any idea out of the box. What are the strategies of Progressive Conservative Party of Ontario to defeat liberal this time? I, I think like the main strategy, I, I, I'm, again, I'm not the guy who puts a strategy for the party, but I'm saying as a normal person and as uh, a man in, in a position, I think we don't need that much of strategy. I mean, everything uh, is clear for the normal average person in Ontario, and that's showing up into the approval rate of Kathleen Wynne. Of course, Kathleen Wynne, approval rate for Kathleen Wynne is not Kathleen Wynne as a person, Kathleen Wynne as a leader, which basically she and her party or her government uh, 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 decisions who made that approval rate gone down, like uh, uh, not as a person, I'm just saying as, as uh, performance wise. So uh, the, the more we see the approval rate going down, that means that Ontario people are not happy about what's going on. And that will drive the motion to change. Not only we need to change because we are bored, it's going to change. No, but there is some compelling reasons for us to say, okay, if you can't come up with something, why don't you step down, let somebody else take over? Hopefully, they will come up with something. And we do have ideas. Um, I think the uh, Conservative Party don't want to reveal all the plan now, like the policy, the platform, because there's a still year and some, which might be um, too early. Right. This way. 
So how much confident are you personally to take over this government from Liberal in next election under the leadership of Patrick Brown? I am 100% confident, 100%. I have no doubt that Ontario people had enough. And it's going to be over. They will say it very loudly in the next election. We know that it's going to happen 100%. Recent polls have suggested uh, citizens that uh, Liberal Party's uh, popularity gone down. Mm -hmm. And even NDP graph is little up than the Liberal. Yes. And Conservatives is at the top. Yes. So do you believe in those uh, polls and those uh, statistics? Well, historically, historically, and except for the, the polls for Trump during the Amer American election, um, Historically, all the bulls seem to be uh, true with some variant. Like there is a, always an, an error rate of like plus 5%, minus 5% or something. But it give a good indication. It give a good indication about the general uh, public's opinion. Now we come to about your vision and your performance. <laughs> you are a candidate almost in a new writing. Yes, it's uh, half of the writing of Erendale, it's split of Erendale. Right. So Erendale is split into two writings, Mississauga and Mills and Mississauga Center. And uh, the M sitting MP there uh, in the uh, Erendale writing <coughs> for the bust, I think, the two, two uh, cycles, uh, Honorable Mr. Chakar. Right. So uh, you are from a writing which is very multicultural writing. <coughs> very multidiverse, yes. Multidiverse, multicultural, yep. multi-faith. And uh, so how do you see your chance of taking over the writing? Uh, there is a general consensus that multicultural and immigrants 100% all the time vote liberals. And that could be true for some extent. Yes, I agree. Uh, but this time, there's a, there's a little bit difference. Uh, the Conservative Party gone through the, like, the change. Like uh, Mr. Patrick Brown is very pragmatic. He moved the party to a different uh, vision, different leader vision, different uh, concepts. Uh, he reached out to all communities, to communities which have never we been seeing them in the conservative side before. Um, uh, it's an, an indication of the leadership direction. And I, I, I think it's, it's very easy now to start figuring out that there's a lot of communities which usually, historically, weren't in a favor of conservative. Now they are open and they are welcoming and they are discussing and they are coming to our events. They are meeting with us. They are discussing uh, opportunities and discussing so, you know, what's next? What's the future? So right. that's, that's giving me an indication that we have a lot of people on board. You are everywhere. You are pretty much sympathetic, very uh, um, friendly to all communities. Do you think this sort of um, lifestyle, mm -hmm. what you are living for mm -hmm. long now, mm -hmm. would help you to integrate with the community, uh, different communities in your writing? Um, I think so. I, I think 100% so because people usually vote for the party. That's true. So um, people will vote for conservative or liberal not because of Sharif. Like there's some percentage, but this percentage could could pretty much be improved if this candidate is known to the people. Like if Tahir knows Sharif. He might go during the voting and think, you know what, I don't usually vote conservative, I vote liberal, but I know Sharif and I think Sharif is a good guy. Could, could help, could work? Maybe. That's my own vision. Is that like, uh, will show up in, in the ballot box? God knows. People have their different opinions. They might stick to their mainstream of, uh, uh, you know, mainstream of uh, uh, attribute as liberal or conservative. But nevertheless, even if they voted liberal, that doesn't matter because we will continue working together. Like, I don't think I'm going to disappear on the face of earth if I didn't win even. 
I'm going to be there, and I'm, I'm working with the people. I'm working for the people. I'm trying to help as much as I can. Uh, I'm not a politician by born. I'm a professor, so I'm teaching five days a week. I work like everybody, uh, and I have a life to run. And I still try to do as much as I can to reach out to communities and help if I can help. And sometimes if I can help arranging a town hall meeting, connecting some ends for people, putting discussions, meeting with people, trying to engage their opinions, try to give them advice about subjects which I can might be know about and, and have some experience about. So I don't think it, it's a bad thing, irrelevant. Like even if people voted for my opponent, that doesn't make any difference for me. I mean, I hope that you vote for me, definitely, because if I'm in position, I might be able to help more. But if not, I'm not going anywhere. I'm here. You're absolutely right. And uh, that's why I think it's not just because of the Conservative Party you would be getting votes. For sure, you would be getting all Conservative votes, but as well as people know you. Yes. It is very important. Absolutely. And as you said, that in any case, you're not going to disappear. Exactly. You're from the community. You will stay in the community forever. Yes. Then that's the way you are, and that's the way an ideal politician should be, in Thank fact. You. you were pretty much engaged and active, arranging different uh, talks yes. with the Conservative Party of Canada's Canada. uh, leadership race candidates. Yes. So how was that experience? Well, um, first of all, as, as leadership start forming, you know, like uh, start be becoming in camps and stuff. I am, I'm in the provincial level, so I, I'm not involved into this. I'm not driving it. I'm not endorsing or doing any of that. But my, I thought that my own duty towards my com community, like the Erin Mills community, is to make sure that they meet those candidates face to face, put their questions on the table for them and see and have some feel about if those are the right guy for me or not, this right the guy for me or not, or hear the platform straight from the person, not through the media. Because you know the media, uh, they, might, they might, I mean, at the end of the day, they will put the points, but the way they put it could make, you know, uh, yeah or nah kind of thing. So. It's very, very important to get your your one-on-one -on -one and also get the feel, like there is a chemistry. Politics, like anything else, you can meet somebody for the first time and you feel that you are connected on the same page, or meet somebody and you feel, you know what, nothing clicks. Same in politics, if you meet one of the candidates or one of the leaders, candidates, and you feel, I think this is the right guy, my gut's feeling telling me that. It might not really be something like all of them are good guys, 100% all of them are good guys, and all of them have good points. Some pluses here, some minuses here. Maybe this is meeting my priorities, not meeting my priorities. Maybe this is his first priority, but for me, this is my third priority. I, I'm worried more about jobs, about economy, more than immigration. Like you can re rearrange the priorities as much as you want. But end of the day, there is an extra beast, which is how do you feel about that? Do you think this is the guy you want him to present you? Do you think he's, this is a type of personality or type of charisma you think is going to be able to do what you wanted to do or not? So that that's doesn't come through the TV, doesn't come through the media, doesn't come through written papers. It comes through meeting the person, hearing them live hearing them one-on-one. -on -one. Ask the question, your particular point. What do you think about this specifically? Because it's not going to be in the, not everything in the platform. The platform is like 3,000 uh, meter upstairs, like very high profile. But you are asking about one point, like small specific point, and that's my, your concern. So that, that's giving you the opportunity to ask the question and hear it from, directly from them. So that's my duty. I, I arrange it for Mr. Maxime Bernier. I arrange it for uh, Mr. Kevin O'Leary. Uh, I help with um, other people arranging for uh, uh, Kelly Leach, for Andrew Scherer. I mean, anybody reached out to us and said, like, we are, we can, we are Mississauga, can we arrange something? I definitely will uh, help out. Yeah, recently I remember you arranged two high-profile conservative uh, party leadership race candidates, 
uh, Maxime Barnier and uh, uh, the week before uh, Kevin O'Leary. Yes. And yesterday Kevin O'Leary uh, decided to step down uh, in favor of Maxime Barnier. Yes. So how do you take this kind of a bold decision? Would it help conservative party and conservative political values? I don't think I don't see any conflict about conservative values and stepping down to to unite because I think this is the strongest move across the whole uh, in terms of that leadership campaign because Kevin and Maxime was one, were one and two all the time two one one two so putting the forces one and two together that could mean close to forty percent of the votes. On, on on average, which give Mr. Maxime Bernier a very, very good advantage. Uh, the other thing is I think there's a very good complementary and compatibility between Mr. Maxime and Mr. Kevin because Mr. Kevin's whole platform was focused on economy, just economy like money, money, money. How can we make our economy works? And I think he could be very well good finance minister, strategic advisor for the economy uh, development for, for Canada. And uh, Mr. Maxime, with his political background, his political experience, his many years in caucus and in, in, uh, in uh, minister in cabinet with uh, Mr. Stephen Harbour, is bringing a very good experience to the House. So I, I think it's a very complementary uh, solution. and. Funny enough, uh, Mr. Maxime Bernier was here on the uh, Tuesday night in Mississauga, and after t after the meeting, uh, it was a public meeting, so everybody was invited. We had uh, quite some number of people. You attended this, yes? So I was after there too. after that uh, uh, meeting, we were sitting for a coffee discussing. So, what do you think, guys? And everyone said his opinion, and I said. It would be a very exclusive uh, combination if uh, Kevin worked with Mr. Maxime, take care of the economy part, Mr. Maxime, the political part. Uh, it's going to be a very good combination. It's going to be very, very strong correlation. Weirdly enough, next day afternoon, we heard the news, and I got phone calls from everyone who was in the <laughs> meeting. I said, did you know something about that and we didn't, <laughs> you didn't tell us? I said, absolutely not. Yes. Absolutely not. Nobody I remember at that anything. point. <laughs> Nobody knew about it. Even uh, when I met Mr. Maxime Bernier next day and I'm laughing, I'm saying, so, you know, did you do something overnight you didn't know about it? He said, Ab absolutely, yes. <laughs> we met together, me and Mr. Uh, Kevin O'Leary, at 1 a.m. in the morning oh my after God. your meeting. <laughs> so that's why I left early because we had to have some negotiations and stuff, discussions. <laughs> And I said, so we were your lucky, uh, you know, lucky coin kind of thing. So I'm the last guy you've seen before you met with Mr. Kevin O'Leary. So you know what? I give you good luck. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Which one community is more enthusiastic in terms of having you MPP in that writing? I think all of them. All of them. Good. Good for you. Like Again, like... Uh, uh, Maybe it's a little bit greedy to say that, but you know, uh, we don't know who's the opponent yet. So until there's an opponent, you are playing in your own, you know, like you are the first because you're only one in the class. You are, you know, the top student because you're only student in the class. But when we have another candidate, I think things will change because, you know, whatever the community this candidate belong to might have some, uh, uh, you know, some uh, motivation, some leverage. And of course, like depending on who's going to be running, uh, it could be a very good star candidate, maybe better candidate than me. I don't know. We don't know that. Thank you very much, Sherry, for no, joining anytime. us today. Uh, we'll be inviting you over and over. Anytime. Because we need your vision oh. for our community. You are a people person. Yes. You love people, and people yes. love you. Thank you. Thank and you very much. all the best for you. Thank you very much, Thank Mr. You. Tahir. I really appreciate uh, being with you today. I really appreciate being able to address the community through TAG TV. And uh, you have been always uh, in all the almost all the events I went to. You were there. You are part of the community. You are, uh, you know, uh, having very good relations and, and ties to every community. And that's that's what works. 
being in media, politics, economical, uh, human rights, anything like it's people. Absolutely. The power of the people. Absolutely. Thank you. And again, all the best and good luck. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Views you just watch Sharif Al Shabawi's exclusive interview at Tag TV in my show Candid Talk. Thank you for watching today's show. Number one multicultural channel. This is Tag TV.